Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups My Breeder Supply. To spay or not to spay, that is the question. So it sounds like Shakespeare, but here we go. So I get phone calls quite frequently where people have got in trouble because they have spayed a dog during a C-section. And so um, I've talked about this before, about that's not a good idea, but I wanna go into the science of exactly why it's not a good idea. So this is what you're faced with. The first thing is, is you know, if you've decided that it's gonna be a one-time deal, you're gonna have one litter of puppies, and at this point you're gonna spay the dog off this, I see why a person would think that spaying makes sense. The first thing is, it's only one surgery for your girl, and it's only one expense for you, it's not two expenses for two surgeries. So there is a strong reason to be thinking that spaying a dog makes sense during surgery. <clears throat> and you will get pressure from vets there's a lot of vets, especially out in California, who do not like the idea about us breeding dogs at all. And any opportunity they can to talk you into doing spaying a dog, they're gonna take it. I don't mean that all vets are that way, but that, that's the other part of this pressure that you're gonna feel. And, and then finally, it does make sense to spay a dog that's not gonna have any more puppies because it completely removes the chance of getting uterine cancer. So, and unwanted pregnancies. So I'm not saying that dogs shouldn't be spayed. I think that that's absolutely fine to spay a dog. But the question is, should a dog be spayed during a C-section or at the completion of a C-section? And I think the answer to that is absolutely no. There is one example of this I'm gonna talk about at the very, very end, where if you're gonna do this, it may be that it's okay, but we'll get to that at the end. But the quick, if you're not gonna watch the rest of the video, the, the answer is, don't spay your dog at the end of a C-section. You have a significantly increased chance of having some major problems, including the death of your, of, your, of your girl, and then consequently losing a litter as well. All right, so let's talk about why this is. Let's get some science behind this. So, so what is going on here? Well, of course, you know, the normal procedure is, is the dog is anesthetized, intubate, intubated, uh, cut open. The horns of the uterus are pulled out of the stomach. The horn, the, 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 where the two horns come together, normally you put a cut right there. And then the puppies are pulled out of that and they're immediately given off to your support team, recovery team, so those puppies can, uh, can be kind of, um, made to breed properly. That's the procedure. That takes, uh, by the time the dog is under and the first cut is made, depends on the number of puppies, but I'd say 45 minutes is, to an hour is a kind of a typical kind of time from the point where she's, she's intubated to the point that she's uh, coming around, about an hour. Um, and, and one of the things, by the way, that you want to do here is the moment that a puppy is being pulled out, that puppy needs to be taken away because that puppy is potentially no longer sterile. It's, once the bag has been opened, it may have poop and what we call meconium on it. That puppy wants to be removed from mum, taken away, and the recovery team then takes care of getting that puppy going. So we want to have a minimum amount of exposure to a dog that stomach is opened up because that's an opportunity to get uh, parasites and bacteria in there or bacteria that could then have bad consequences. So we want to make a good surgeon's going to do this quickly. I mean, they're not going to cut corners, but you want the in and the out to be as quick as possible to, to reduce the exposure time. All right, so what happens when you're going to have um, a spade done at the end of this? Well, the first thing is, is you do the normal C-section. Now the whole uterus and the fallopian, uh, um, everything to do with the, the, the fertility part of a dog is basically removed. And it's then cut off, ligated, you know, it's basically clamped off because there's quite a lot of different blood supplies to go to all this. So, so one of the problems here is, is hemorrhaging. You've got, already got one surgery going on, now you've got a second surgery. So you've got a possibility of hem hemorrhaging. In a situation like that, and that does happen sometimes in C-sections, then you have to go back, open the dog back up again, find out where the hemorrhage is, clamp it off, sew the dog back up. That's all well and good, and it's probably gonna be okay, except that she's got a litter of puppies now at home, and now you've gotta go take her back for another surgery, with the potential that she's not gonna be very happy at the end of all this, and she's gonna have a hard time looking after her puppies for the first couple of days, that is the crucial time that you want your mum to do the best that she possibly can for the puppies. So that's a one reason why that's a no. The second thing is, is that there is a lot of blood volume that is in the whole um, um, fertility system of a dog. 
When the pap is removed, so of course there's blood that's associated with that, that's gonna happen anyway. But about a third of the dog's blood supply is being used by the puppies and the uterus and all of the fertility bits and pieces that go with it. So what can happen is, is that you can have a dog that crashes because you've, you've, you've got a reduced blood supply. And the second thing, so, so this is blood volume loss can, produce, can, can cause a crash. And so again, that's something that we'd rather not have happening while we're trying to get puppies going. Second, the third thing is, is that during this removal of all this blood, you can have a low pressure situation. Because you've removed a lot of blood, the dog's pressure, blood pressure drops. That's all fine. Hopefully that's okay. You've got a drip going, you can add some, add some volume if you need to. But the problem is, once you sewn everything back up, the blood pressure comes up and the leaks that you would have seen, now all of a sudden, you can't see it because you sewed up. So you can get blood loss because of a, a, a low pressure that then develops into a normal pressure after it's sewn up. The whole uh, whelp process is what's called a thrombolytic state. It's set up so the blood clots, clots can form because you because nature has set it up this way. You know there's going to be some blood loss. You don't want the dog to bleed out. So it's in what's called a thromb thrombolytic state. So now you, what's happened is, is you not only had the surgery but you've now ligated and removed all of this it's all been tied off that can produce blood clots those blood clots could go to the brain or the blood or, or the lungs and that could be a very bad situation for the dog so that's another reason you've just doubled the length of your surgery time so you've now got a dog that is not going to be feeling so good when it comes out of this and you want this dog again to be looking after puppies so it may be out of it for quite some time because it's a lot more pressure to, to add um, the, the uh, <clears throat> spay to the C-section. So another reason for doing it. I'll give you an example for myself. I had this a long time ago. We had a little chihuahua. Uh, she was having trouble uh, whelping because she was so small. And we then decided, look, she's not going to have these puppies. We're going to have to go have a C-section done, which we did. And the doc said, well, you know, she, she's very small, she's having a hard time with this. Uh, I don't think that you should breed her again. Uh, let's do a spay at the same time. We didn't know any better. We said, sure, do it. We're not gonna breed her again either. We don't wanna put her through this. We did, uh, five hours later, she was dead. So there you go, that's my experience. One time, that's all it took for me, one time was my experience. And then I did some research on it, and that was many years ago, and that's when I'm finding all this stuff that people are saying, no, nope, you really don't wanna do this. And then the last thing is, look, you may decide you wanna breed her again. And once you've removed the, the, the goody parts, that's not happening. So at least you're staving off that decision. You know, it may be this is a wonderful litter. It's very successful. She loves her babies. You have a great time doing it. People want the puppies. She bounces back to normal. Her inside looks good. And maybe you want to have another go at it. You've got that choice. So all of this stuff together, this, all of this together says a big fat no. Don't do it. Now, there is a process which is called on block removal of the uterus. What that means is, is you remove the uterus with the puppies in it as all as one big block. That then gets given off to the recovery team and the recovery team then worries with getting those puppies out of the uterus and getting them going. But now you have not increased it significantly the amount of time for the surgery. So on block, everything comes out. You don't just pull the horns out and start removing puppy slowly. You take the whole thing, you whack it off. That goes to the recovery team. They get after recovering the puppies and the primary surgeon gets on with doing, uh, doing the ligation, closing everything up. That's not gonna increase the time. You still got some of these problems here and I still don't personally like it, but if you are deciding that you are absolutely gonna do a spay at the same time that you're gonna do um, the C-section, see if they can perform an on block where they're going to remove everything on mass and the second team worries with getting the puppies out so you don't increase the length of time for the whole surgery that's it there we go but you know my answer it's a big fact no thanks for watching bye everybody hey thanks for watching the the video uh, i really appreciate people who subscribe to me it helps me encourage me to do more of these videos but do remember a disclaimer here i am not a vet I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. 
There's nothing implied here, and certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Thank you.